here's the proof 2.0. So instead of the, the test set up on a string, we're gonna set it up across some chains so it can swing freely. And we're gonna actually do this in a swimming pool and we'll model a few different effects of uh, in air, underwater, in air hitting against a wall, uh, in air going a long distance, in air at an angle at the water. We're gonna test all kinds of things and get some real data and real results to, uh, to really show the proof. Excellent, can't wait. Cool. Hey, it's William from Green Lizard USA. Uh, we're out here again to show you another experiment. So I did a video about a month back for Veritasium. It was the science communication video around why jet boats have their outlet above the water line instead of below. And a lot of people didn't agree. So I did a here's the proof experiment in my backyard with a cooler and a garden hose. And still there were a lot of people who didn't agree. And I'll give it to them. It wasn't the most scientific. So here we are in a pool today with a little bit more scientific setup, uh, still backyard experiment. And we have the two conditions again, above the water line versus below. And I'm gonna show you directly on this digital scale right there, which condition is more powerful from a thrust perspective. And I think you're gonna be surprised. All right, so I'm gonna show you just real briefly overall what this experiment setup looks like, and then we're gonna get right into it. So I borrowed a little uh, bath toy from my kid's bathtub to set up as our boat. And we have it hanging on chains this time, rather than on a slide, if you watched that previous video, it was a tube on a rope. There's a lot of friction there, and people had some different comments. So this time we have a completely frictionless swinging pendulum. So any force created from the water thrust can be equally push forward underwater as it can above water. So basically, you know, it's hanging there from the chains and we have a chain connected to the back of the, of the boat and we have our water supply running through some tubing and coming down here to the back and it goes down and out. So we can set this up in air and then we can lower it on this rack and put this tubing down in the water and exhaust underwater. So before we start this experiment, I wanna explain one thing that I'm sure somebody has a question about. And it's if you look at this setup across from left to right, you see that everything's already in tension. I have a little piece of wire here that's holding everything straight and the chain coming from the back of the boat to the scale is also under tension. But that doesn't matter because I can zero the scale from the beginning and it doesn't matter if there's zero pounds or 10 pounds, I can zero it from the, the start hold everything constant, and we're just measuring the thrust coming out of the nozzle. So this test fixture allowed us to test three different setups. The outlet below the water line, where we could exhaust into the swimming pool. An outlet above the water line, where we could spray through the air and let the water land in the pool. And a final one that people wanted to see was the reaction you get off of a brick wall or a fixed surface. There's my brick wall. So for the first setup, we had the nozzle under the water and turned on the water full power from the garden hose and we were able to measure a force or a thrust of two pounds, one ounce. In the second setup, we had the garden hose valve turned all the way on and we were able to measure a thrust or reaction force on that digital fish scale of two pounds, three ounces two ounce increase over the below the water line outlet. The third setup with the water spraying against the brick showed no additional force compared to just spraying the water in air. 